Hello, I'm John Cobb, president of Magnet Bank. Once again, we are proud to sponsor the highlights of the 1983 West Virginia University football season. We congratulate Coach Don Nealon, his assistants, and the entire Mountaineer team for continuing their winning tradition capped by their third consecutive 9-3 and three season, a victory in the Hall of Fame Bowl, and a top 20 ranking in all the major polls. I'm sure you'll join with me in thanking them for an exciting 1983 season and wishing them well as they prepare for 1984. Magnet Bank is equally proud to be a major sponsor of West Virginia University and the Mountaineer Sports Network. We hope that you will enjoy this MSN production of Mountaineer Football 1983. The football history book at West Virginia University grew heavier in 1983. A volume packed with tradition and memorable gridiron moments. The newest edition is sure to be one of its all-time greatest chapters. This story sums up the arrival of the most successful era ever for the old gold and blue. Capacity crowds build a magnificent stadium still in its childhood. A record-setting kicker continued chalking up points to help an offense led by one of the brightest quarterbacks in the game. And a defense that found itself a few short seasons ago continued to stifle opponents and make the kind of breaks their offensive teammates love. But the climax to this story wraps things up very nicely. With its defeat of a battling Kentucky squad in the Hall of Fame Bowl, this group of young men made Mountaineer history. Not only had they captured West Virginia's second bowl victory in three years, they had carved a special place for their head coach. Don Nealon became the first head coach in West Virginia history to win more than 25 games in a three-year span. With a coaching hat trick of sorts, Nealon had guided the Mountaineers to successive 9-3 records after a 6-6 six six 1980 campaign that was the program's first non-losing season in five years. What a story it makes. You've got action, suspense, heroes, villains, and a happy ending. The 1983 Mountaineers were a team destined for fame. Presented by Magnet Bank. Red, 46. Boy, we had one there. Don Nealon has won more games in his first four years as head coach of West Virginia's football team than any other Mountaineer mentor in history. No era has enjoyed the consistent success Nealon and his staff have been able to capture. Naturally, we're proud of our one-loss record here at West Virginia University because, to a degree, the one-loss record is always the bottom line. However, there are many areas of our program we're extremely proud. Our strength program is second to none. Our dormitories are neat and clean. But when you think about the total program, I believe that attitude is the key because with an excellent attitude, you have an excellent chance to be successful, and we have an excellent attitude here at West Virginia University. 1983 promised to be exciting with the return on offense of Jeff Hostetler, one of the country's finest signal callers, and a group of veterans at the skilled position. The offensive line was bigger than ever and promised to protect Haas from the threat of enemy blitzes. The defense had lost consensus All-American Darrell Talley and linebacker Dennis Foltz, both of whom played in the NFL as rookies. But new faces were there with the same old hits. And then there was Woody. Paul Woodside had become one of the most consistent place kickers in the game. Certainly the yardstick by which WVU fans would measure kicking success from now on. The season opened in explosive fashion. The Mountaineers hammered the visiting Ohio University Bobcats by a final margin of 55 to 3. WVU finished the day just seven yards short of a 500 yard total offensive effort, while the defense held Ohio University to 186 yards for the afternoon. A lot of new faces found their way into the lineup, with running backs Pat Randolph and John Hollyfield 
giving the throng of more than 54,000 something to rave about. A week later, another crowd in excess of 54,000 turned out to see the Mountaineers demolish Pacific. The final score was 48 to 7, and the Mountaineers had become one of college football's most explosive teams. Hey, Willie! Now he's punting with the wind this time, so he'll get about five more yards. Hey, Willie, I'll bet you we run this one back. They're ready to die. The first of an incredible five regular season TV appearances took place September 17th, when West Virginia hit the road to face border rival Maryland. Mountaineer Terrapin battles have become legendary in Eastern football circles, and this year's matchup let America know the story. After falling behind 10-3 in the first half, the Mountaineers defense came up with one of its patented big plays when the hardest little hitter in football, Tim Agee, picked off a boomer size and pass. That set up a bowling score by fullback Ron Wolfley, which nodded the score at 10 after 30 minutes. Neyland's charges took control of the game in the third quarter. A 73-yard drive on their second possession of the half and a 42-yard strike from Hostetler to tight end Rob Bennett on their next possession gave the Mountaineers a lead that would prove insurmountable for a talented Maryland team. The final score was 31-21. West Virginia had proven it could win tough games on the road. You know, going away from home and against that type of a football team, that kind of a hostile crowd, uh, if we play like that every week, uh, folks will know we're around. Another television game found the Mountaineers in New England to try and shut down Doug Flutie and the Eagles. Traditionally, the most physical game on the West Virginia schedule, this season's meeting was no different. The Mountaineers exploded for 17 points in the first quarter, and the defense put together another of its famous goal line stand. West Virginia extended its lead to 24-10 at the half and marched to a 27 to 17 triumph. All over the country, college football experts began to take notice. It seemed in the midst of the Panthers and Lions and Eagles, the East had found another beast. This one in old gold and blue. I think our guys have realized that we have the ability to be in a top 10 or a top 20 team. And I think uh, people in the nation have realized that uh, West Virginia should be respected and that they are a top 10 or top 20 team. October 1st came to a northern West Virginia city electrified with excitement, packed with people, invaded by the Pitt Panthers. Pitt had come to town for the annual backyard brawl, and this West Virginia team was ready for a tussle. After falling behind by a touchdown on two different occasions in the first half, West Virginia shut out the Panthers in the second half and came back to record quite possibly the best win of the year. West Virginia 24, hit 21. The winning touchdown was scored on a play that had won games before for West Virginia. West Virginia lined up to go. There's a fake. Hostetler keeps the ball, rolls around the right side into the end zone to score. Hostetler with a great fake. He tears it around the right side. He takes it into pay dirt with a great block from Rob Bennett. Jeff Hostetler behind the block by Bennett goes in to score. And the West Virginia Mountaineers with 6.27 on the clock go into the lead. 23-21. And there was reason to celebrate long and hard. West Virginia was off to a 5-0 start, its best in many years. The unbeaten string hit six two weeks later as Virginia Tech came to Morgantown for another border clash. The Hokies managed 221 yards in total offense for the afternoon, but West Virginia's defense refused to buckle and refused to allow a score. Middle guard Dave Oblak recovered a fumble early to set up the only touchdown of the game, 
and Woody added two layers of icing with field goals from 35 and 31 yards. By the end of the afternoon, an enthusiastic Mountaineer crowd had realized they were watching a team that had found its way to the top. The final score of 13 to nothing, the shutout of a good Virginia Tech team added emphasis to the signs of West Virginia's stature. The team had been recognized as the best in the East, a goal Nealon had been shooting for. But more importantly, West Virginia had climbed to number four in both wire service polls. The land of the Giants had become home. Getting to be number four in the country was very difficult, but we knew it would be even more difficult to stay number four or do better than that because of our schedule that was down the road. Standing in the way of further movement in the polls was a Penn State team that had been improving every week since a disastrous start. The Mountaineers traveled to University Park, Pennsylvania with an unblemished record, a top five ranking, and a 27-year winless streak against the Nittany Lions. Two winning streaks were on the line at Beaver Stadium that afternoon, and one of them stayed intact. Unfortunately, it was Penn State's. The Lions looked nothing like the team that had been humiliated by Nebraska and had lost at home to Cincinnati. Penn State struck early and kept going on the way to a 41-23 victory. Anytime we play Penn State in football, naturally the emotions run extremely high. Unfortunately, it seemed like they had a little bit more of an emotional edge than we did and they deserved to win the ball game. Waiting down the schedule was a hurricane of a team. Under coach Howard Schnellenberger, Miami of Florida had become one of the nation's most consistent winners. The Orange Bowl held more than 62,000 fans that afternoon, and the Mountaineers looked ready to rumble when their first possession resulted in a 3-0 lead on a 21-yard field goal by Woodside. Miami, the eventual national champion, bounced right back and kept on going, holding WVU scoreless the rest of the way for a 20-3 victory. Although losers of two straight, West Virginia had not lost the eyes of the Bowl Scouts, who continued to trail the Mountaineers for the remainder of the season. They came to Mountaineer Field twice in early November to see Nealon and company rack up victories over Temple and Rutgers. The Owls were unable to stop a balanced West Virginia attack that finished the afternoon with 175 yards passing and 180 yards on the ground. The Mountaineers picked up their seventh win in nine starts against Temple. The faithful braved wintry weather as Rutgers ventured into a snowy Mountaineer field. West Virginia took the field to do what they did best in recent seasons. They threw the football. Ostedler got the protection he needed to complete 17 of 28 passes for 279 yards and three scores. With a week left, West Virginia had won eight and surely would end up in a bowl for the third straight year. The regular season finale at Syracuse had a deja vu quality. Two years earlier, the Mountaineers had traveled to this dome stadium with a senior quarterback and eight victories, only to be upset on regional TV. Three interceptions by the Syracuse defense resulted in 10 points that helped put the game away. The upset was repeated as Syracuse bested WVU 27-16. West Virginia dominated every statistic except the final score as the Orange recorded their second upset in a row. They had defeated Boston College the week before. Following the game, the immediate disappointment was soothed by West Virginia's acceptance of a bid to the Hall of Fame Bowl to face another border rival, the University of Kentucky. Well, I think I can speak for the rest of the team. We're very happy to go to the bowl game. You know, this means a lot to us. It means a lot to me. This will be my third bowl game I'm going to. And, uh, hey, let's go down to Birmingham and have a good time down there. Let's, let's win. Birmingham, Alabama is usually mild, if not balmy, in mid-December. But the grip of an Arctic storm that had paralyzed much of the central United States with temperatures of more than 20 below zero brought frost to the Hall of Fame Bowl. A good crowd braved the unseasonably chilly evening, including a band of Mountaineer fans. They were rewarded with one of the year's more exciting bowl contests, as the Mountaineers used big plays on defense and the running of Tom Gray 
to outlast the Wildcats 20 to 16. On defense, Steve Hathaway showcased his credentials as one of the top outside linebackers in the East. Tim Agee continued to put a lot of big hits into a small package and came up with an interception that helped key the victory. Jeff Hostetler, after a disastrous first half, came out firing in the final two periods, leading the Mountaineers to the come from behind win while also earning most valuable player honors. Gray, Ron Wolfley, Randolph, and others helped balance the West Virginia attack, keeping Kentucky guessing and the football moving. Nealon was proud of the performance in the Hall of Fame Bowl and even happier with another top 20 finish for West Virginia football. Three nine and three seasons, three bowl appearances, three times finishing in the top 20 and this year in the top 15. The program's on the upswing. We're going to get better and better. We're nowhere close to being where we want to be, but we plan on jumping up even higher next year. With national rankings becoming a common occurrence at West Virginia, fans should get a kick out of the Mountaineers next season. Paul Woodside, the most consistent kicker in WVU history, returns for his senior year. An All-American and NCAA record holder, Woody will be the cornerstone of the Mountaineers' 1984 fortune. Hostetler and Hollins will be lost on offense, but strength lies with the returnees in Wolfley, Gray, Bowman, Brown, Mullen, and Drury. There will be some big shoes to fill defensively, with seven departing but some hard-hitting youngsters are ready to step in. We always lose a lot of good football players, but I'm of the opinion that graduation is healthy. It's time for some young players to take over and do their thing, so to speak. We're anxiously awaiting spring football to see how our younger players perform, because if we can answer the ifs, and we have a lot of them, we'll be another fine football team in 1984. I say go, go, Mountain years go. Next September, it will all begin again. But looking back at nine victories, a great win over Pitt, the Hall of Fame Bowl Championship, and a ranking among the nation's best, the 1983 Mountaineers were a team destined for fame.